Hello, I'm Mr. Pisto, and in today's video, we're going to talk about my top five team up commanders for Standard Brawl in March of the Machine. All right, so number five on my list is Thalia and the Git Rog Monster, a four mana, four, four, first strike, death touch, human frog horror. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Creatures in non basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, so that's kind of the Thalia ability. And then whenever Thalia and the Gitrog monster attack, sacrifice a creature or a land, then draw a card. So the sacrifice thing is the Gitrog one. It's nice that you could be able to sacrifice creatures because then we can, there are a lot more synergies than just sacrificing lands. So one of the first ways I thought we could build this style of deck would be a Legendaries Matter kind of deck and Ratadrabic of Urborg fits that very well. This makes it so your zombies have vigilance and whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So sacrificing legendary creatures could be something we do. Um, I think Edgar Charmed Groom is just a great in general for a deck like this. It's a four mana, four, four. Um, and when it dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. So we can sacrifice it with Thalia and the Gitrog monster. And then we get Edgar Markov's Coffin. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, create a one, one white, black vampire creature token with lifelink, and then put a blood line counter on Edgar Markov's Coffin. Then there are three or more blood counters on it remove those blood counters and transform it so we transform it back to edgar markov and then we get one once to sacrifice to draw cards we have edgar again to do it all over again so kind of a tokeny theme is probably a way we can go then we have cards like deep root wayfinder one of the new cards from march of the machine two mana two three when it deals combat damage to a player or battle you get to surveil so look at the top card of your library put it into your graveyard if you want and then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this helps us bring back the lands that we sacrificed with Thalia and the Gitrog monster. Another way to get lands back is Splendid Reclamation. Four mana sorcery, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Excuse me, tapped. So we can sacrifice some lands with Thalia and the Gitrog monster and then bring them all back with a card like Splendid Reclamation. Titania Voice of Gaia is another one. It fits in with the Ratadrabic style of legendary creatures. So three mana, three, four, it has reach. And whenever a one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain two life. And then there's the Argoth Sanctum of Nature. And when you exile that land and Titania, you get to meld them together. So playing around with having cards and lands in your graveyard is a very powerful strategy with Thalia and the Gitrog monster. And then the final card for Thalia and the Gitrog monster is Dire Graph Rebirth. So we can play a reanimator style of deck because we're sacrificing creatures. So uh, Dire Graph Rebirth is five mana, but it does cost one less to cast for each creature that died. And you can return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It also has flashbacks. So you get to use it twice. So Thalia and the Gitrog monster, it could be some kind of sacrifice deck. It can be a uh, lands in your graveyard matter style deck. So I think it's going to be probably my fifth favorite card and team up commander to play with in this new format. My number four pick is Barbarigmos and Fibblethip. Five mana, six, five. So it's dance are already great. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you draw a card. You can discard any number of land cards when you discard one or more cards this way. Barbarigmos and Fibblethip deals twice that much damage to target creature. And then you can pay a blue and a colorless or generic to put Barbarigmos and Fibblethip into its owner's library third from the top. So you can protect it from removal. Um, you can deal lots of damage with its discard. Too bad it only goes to creatures, but it draws you a card when it enters and when it attacks. So one of the things we're going to want to do with this is trying to give it haste and I have two cards that I think work very well with that. Trailblazing Historian is a two mana one three that has a haste itself and you can tap it to give haste to another creature. And another one that gives haste is yet another team up commander with Surok and Gore Claw. Six mana six five. It has trample. 
Other creatures you control have trample. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your, under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it. It gains haste until the end of earn. So this is going to be kind of a team or ramp deck to begin with. So Surak and Goreclaw will fit well into a deck like that. And uh, yeah, 6-5 trample. Uh, gives all your other creeper, creatures trample so we can give our Barbarigmos and Fibblethip trample and we can also give it haste when it enters the battlefield so we get to draw two cards in that case. Then we have something like Besaidru Reaches Skyward. It's a four mana uh, saga and you get to search for basic lands, put them into your hand and then shuffle your library. So if we have Barbarigmos out, this gives us lands to discard. We can put one of the lands from our graveyard onto the top of our library if we wish and then we can return this to the other side and which it is a star for star for the number of lands you control so getting lands out of your graveyard is very powerful we're looking to ramp so a card like inga and essica helps us ramp helps us cast our three color spells and also whenever you cast a spell if three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it you get to draw a card so we're drawing cards we're casting spells four mana four four is very powerful we have ren and realm breaker a three mana four loyalty planeswalker we've talked about this in the past up in the cards there there will be a, a thing for ren and realm breaker lands you control have tap to add one mana of any color so that helps us cast barbarigmos because it's three colors um you can animate turn a land into a creature that has vigilance hexproof and haste until the end of turn and if your next turn is still a land you can mill three cards put a permanent card from among the milled cards into your hand and if you ever get it up to its minus seven being able to play lands from your graveyard and cast spells from your graveyard is very powerful especially when Barbarigmos and Fibblethip want to discard those cards. And Deja Vu from our last commander. We're also probably wanting cards like Splendid Reclamation, getting our cards out of our, our land cards out of our graveyard and onto the battlefield might be a very powerful thing to do with Barbarigmos and Fibblethip. All right, so the third card on my list here is... Dejiru and Hazaret. So as long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, Dejiru and Hazaret has Vigilance and Haste. It's a five mana, five, four. Whenever it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may exile a legendary creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. To the end of turn, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. So one thing we're, want to, we're going to want to do is give haste. So this Trailblazing Historian, I believe, will be played in this deck as well giving Dejiro and Hezzeret haste is very powerful. Then we have five legendary creatures and there are many more to choose from. These are just the five that I chose. Um, I like Rem and Carlos Stalwart Slayer because of the fact that it helps negate damage that it will be done to your creatures. Then we have Urbrask Heretic Praetor. This helps uh, stop your opponents from drawing cards and uh, makes them exile the card that they would draw instead. And you get to do the same thing, but you also uh, get to draw your card for turn. So it gives you card advantage um, and also helps just a really good legendary creature to cast for free. Uh, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, doubles up your enter the battlefield effects and stops your opponents. Very good card to cast for free. We have the, the named Elish Norn from the new set. Uh, making your opponents pay life or one mana. Every time they deal damage to you or an a permanent you control, it gets very taxing. And then you can flip it to the uh, saga that really kind of does it all, makes creatures, uh, gives creatures double strike and plus one plus one, destroys all non-Phyrexians, artifacts and lands. So that could be a problem uh, if you're playing a lot of non-Phyrexian legendary creatures. And then the last legendary creature that I have here, there are lots more, like I said, is Miro, Shield of Argive. Four mana, three, four. Opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments during your turn. So this basically makes it so your spells can't get countered and all that good stuff. And whenever it attacks, create X-1-1 one, one soldiers, um, where X is the number of soldiers you control. So you're getting a little bit of... Uh, card advantage or a little bit of a creature advantage with Miro, but you're also making it so that uh, your stuff is untouchable on your turn, which is quite powerful. Number two on my list, second to last, 
Another red card. It's Hogla and Yadaro. Six mana, seven, seven. When it enters the battlefield, you can give it trample and haste, or you can have it fight another creature. Because it's our commander, we're not really going to be able to use the second apart, but that's discard Kogla and Yadaro, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment, shuffle Kogla and Yadaro into your library from your graveyard, and then draw a card. So we're really using it as either a 7-7 seven, seven hasty trample creature or a creature that can kill something when it enters the battlefield. We have Armored Scrap Gorger because we're going to be wanting to ramp. This also deals with our opponent's graveyards. It's quite nice. Luka Bound to Ruin is another good ramp spell that we can use. It's plus one, gives us two uh, red and green mana that we can cast creature spells or activate their abilities. It makes a blocker with a 3-3 Phyrexian Beast feature token, and it can also deal damage divided as you or uh, x damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers where x is the greatest power among that creature or the creatures you control as you activate the ability so even if you activate the ability and you go and kill something you can still pick hogla and yadaro which is a lot of damage uh we're going to be doing our own kind of bite spells the new cosmic hunger target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature planeswalker or more importantly here battle so uh this can help you deal with um the battles that you play if you play any and then we have hajar loyal bodyguard you can sacrifice this to give all your legendary creatures plus one plus o n indestructible until the end of turn so it's a small creature to play out early it also helps you protect all your legendary creatures and one of those legendary creatures that i think will be great in this deck is halana and alana partners four mana two three first strike reach the beginning of combat on your turn put x one one counters on another target creature you control rex is its power and that creature gains haste so you could fight something with kogla and yadaro and if you have halana and alana partners out then you can use the um, ability to give it haste and you're attacking with a 9-9. And the last card for this deck, which is kind of a cheeky one, I think Voldaren, Voldaren Thrill Seeker is a really cool card to be playing in a deck like this. It's a 3-mana 1-1 one, one, that has backup 2. So you can put 2-1-1 one, one counters on it or 2-1-1 uh, one, one counters on another creature and they gain this card's ability until the end of turn. It's pay one, sacrifice this creature. It deals damage equal to its power to any target. So we're a gruel ramp deck. We have cards like Kogla and Yadaro that have seven power and seven toughness. You put the two one one counters on Kogla and Yadaro. Now you have nine power and nine toughness and you can pay one mana to throw it at your opponent's face. I think this Voldaren Thrill Seeker in a lot of red decks is going to be a really cute way to end a game. And then the final, my number one favorite card that is a partner commander is Galta and Maverna. It's a seven mana, 12, 12, has trample. Whenever you attack, choose one, create a tapped and attacking XX green dinosaur creature token with trample where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures or create X11 white vamp higher creature tokens with lifelink where x is the number of atta other attacking creatures so there are two ways to build this deck you can build it with tokens like join the dance mondrak glory dominus i think mondrak goes into either one because if you make a a big dinosaur then you get to make two big dinosaurs and wedding announcement the artifact that flips into an anthem and gives you a one one human creature token if you only attack with one or fewer creatures or draw a card if you attack with two or more so you can go with the whole token aspect or we can go ramp with cards like Gwena eyes of gaia uh Z zopentral hunger dominus and ancient imperia sword Gwena gives us mana to activate abilities of creatures and cast creatures then you if you it cast something with power five or greater you get to untap Gwena and put one a one one counter dope control makes your galta a 24 24 so effectively a one shot and you can also sacrifice two other creatures to 
can make Zo control indestructible. And then the ancient Imperiosaur is a giant creature. It has Convoke. And every time you Convoke, so when you tap a creature to add mana, you put two extra 1-1 one -one counters on Ancient Imperial Sword has Trample and Ward too. So you can make this like a 20-20 if you tap seven creatures to cast it. So uh, goes in the top end of kind of both decks. So like Mondrak, Ancient Imperial Sword, or you can kind of hybrid these together and do like a token ramp deck. So yeah, those are the five March of the Machines team up commanders that I think are going to be the most fun to play with. All right, so those are my top five. What do you think? What are your top five? Also, if you want to figure out if you have these cards on Arena, maybe take a look at this video up here. Or if you have some want some ideas for the Phyrexian Praetors in a Standard Brawl, take a look at this video here. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. From Mr. Pisto to you, stay safe. Bye for now.